Hey guys, this is Oracle Daphne. My name is Beth and I'm back for your 20, January 2016 monthly tarot horoscope. Um, this is for everyone with their ascendant sun or moon in the lovely Pisces. And um, welcome <laughs> to my channel if you've you're new to my channel. Um, thank you so much for liking and subscribing and Google Plusing. I really appreciate it. Um, I have a new website. That's my big news. I've, I finished it uh, just in December. Um, so you can, um, if you'd like to have a private reading with me, um, check it out. And um, all you need to do is pick a date and time from my calendar page um, and then email me. Um, you know, at elizabetholson31 at gmail.com uh, to set up private reading. Um, so, um, so what else? Oh, I've got a lot of news. <laughs> uh, this year is, is big. You know, last year was really, really crazy um, for me. A lot of, I did a lot of new things. Um, I started a new channel called A Closet for Francis. So if you're really into hair and makeup, uh, tips, uh, definitely check it out. I will also post a link for you there. And, um, and yeah, so let's just get started. Um, I'm hoping 2016 is, is, is a better year. Um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of things that happen, but, um, it's, it's not going to be an easy ride specifically for Pisces. Um, but let's just check out the energies in January and see where you're at with things. Interesting. You may be in a relationship with an Aquarius or you may be, um, getting into a relationship with an Aquarius, um, uh, at the end of January, or there's just maybe somebody who's coming into your life at that time. Um, because you did get the Queen of Cups did come up for the Aquarius reading, and that's the outcome. So you do have similar cards to Aquarius as well. So you may have, you know, your Ascendant or Moon or something in Aquarius. Um, but um, let's just start off with um, the cards in the center of the reading, okay? And... Just looking here in what I call the heartbeat of the reading um, you have two cards which are very you know interesting in similar in in um, coloring and I'm just going to show you you have the knight of pentacles crossed by the page of pentacles okay similar energies to me this is the quest for money the quest for the new the new job the new relationship. This is having moved on or needing to move on from a new relationship. This is needing to slow down um, and smell the roses, taking time to smell the roses. The Knight of Pentacles um, can indicate um, a Cancer Scorpio male. Okay, also for you uh, Pisces ladies, this is maybe somebody who's moved on um, from your relationship or needing to, you know, this is needing to move on from a relationship. Um, it can show up for, for some of you, on a, I don't know why I'm getting this. For some of you, it's actually um, a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, or Aries male also. There's something about the Aries that shows up here too. Um, there's like, a, there's always an Aries Pisces connection. So you may have been either in a relationship with an Aries or, um, was one of the other signs that I mentioned, and there may be some element of needing to move on from that relationship, okay, or moving on from that person in some way. Uh, but the Nine of Pentacles is somebody who's on that gerbil wheel, you know, somebody who's going and, you know, just cranking away, working, 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 and trying to get somewhere. The Page of Pentacles is the new, the seed of potential, the new business, the new job, the new partner, the new um, idea, the new project. This is somebody also who's in school. So some of you um, Pisces may just be very young, maybe still in school, and you may just be very busy. Um, for those of you who are out of school, this is, you know, just working day in and day out trying to get ahead. You know, that's the main focus for you beginning of January. That's maybe has been your focus, um, but that's you trying to get somewhere. And it's interesting because um, the, both the Knight of Pentacles and the Page of Pentacles are about that materialism a little bit. Um, some of you 
you know, you may be struggling in a material way where you don't feel like you're as abundant as you want to be, um, or you don't have the money, you know, in some way. Um, the thing is, it's linking up with the king of pentacles. And to me, this could be like a family. You're spending a lot of time with family in the beginning of January. You may have been spending a lot of time with family, uh, Pisces, you know, you may be the page of pentacles you know you may have a lot of strong cancer taurus or virgo in your chart um and the knight of pentacles may be like your son or something like that um and the king may be somebody that you're married to um or it could be like if you're a male pisces you um having a lot of strong you know earth sign you know planets in your chart or um you being in a relationship with someone who's very practical. Um, at the same time, the King of Pentacles is a fabulous foundation. So I don't necessarily, you may be married to somebody who has money or they may be a very strong provider for you in some way, male, female, doesn't matter. Um, there may be some, um, both the page and the king are holding seeds, which are to me are children. Um, so you may have two children together. You may have one child together. Um, you have maybe more than one. Um, you know, this could be like, the, the king could be like the father of your children kind of thing. Um, but the king is showing up here as the foundation. So he may be the, you know, you may be also the king of pentacles in a sense where you may be like the provider for your family. You may be, um... So you can be married to someone who's very much the provider for the family, or it could be you, um, where you are, you know, the breadwinner, you go to work every day, you know, you, you bring home the bacon, okay, kind of thing. Um, but it's also really good because it's sort of like you're established, you have a house, maybe you have a house, and you have a car, and you have a business, or you have a job, and it's very stable, it's very steady, it's very like, there aren't many changes, there's no highs, there's no lows, it's just constant where you're working and you're trying your, to, your best to get ahead in some way or pay your bills. Um, now, what's going on around you? Um, there's a lot of negativity surrounding you, okay? So at the heartbeat of the reading, there's this quest for wealth or this, this desire to get ahead. But what's around you is negativity, okay? So... You may be in relationship wise, you may have some relationship struggle, okay? Uh, you may have had some relationship struggle in the past. You have the devil because you have the devil card in the past. Um, you have the two of swords crowning you, and you have the eight of swords in the immediate future. So this is you know what's kind of going on around you. What's what's what was happening in the past, the devil card is feeling, you know, for those of you who are in a relationship chained or stuck in a relationship that you wish to get out of, okay? Uh, for some of you, f female Pisces, it's, you know, for some reason having either a court of attachment issue with um, someone who's not good for you, um, or being in a relationship with someone who has either a drug problem, an alcohol problem, alcohol problem. You may, yourself may have had some issues with drugs and alcohol. Um, you know, it could be just alcohol, could be just drugs. It doesn't have to be both. Um, but, you know, the devil is temptation in some way. There also may be an issue where you may have a partner who was tempted to cheat, or you may have been tempted to cheat, because that there's a strong element of, um, the devil is pretty much ever, you know, the seven deadly sins, and that's one of the things, if you're in a relationship, this, when this shows up, this is where, um, you know, one of you, maybe even both of you, are tempted. And a lot of times that temptation is to cheat. Um, so it is, you know, be careful of the seven deadly sins. This is the, addic the addict or the addiction problem. Or this is, again, that issue where somebody is lording, lording some power over you. Uh, maybe you feel, like, powerless. Maybe somebody else is very much in control of the relationship. And you feel like you're you're not in control, and they're in control. But the thing is, is and so this is leading to this this issue um, is leading to the two of swords. The two of swords is, um, I want to say, you know, the argument where two people get into an argument and then they don't talk. There's this disconnect. It's a disconnect. If you're 
if you were in a relationship with somebody who had an addiction problem, or if there was somebody who was very much in control, or in the control seat, a driver's seat of the relationship, um, this is where you may be not talking to that person for some time. In that, you know, in the beginning of January, this is like the disconnect where you're like, okay, um, you know, you're not talking to them at all. Um, this is the argument that leads to, you know, the silent treatment. This is the argument that is, you don't agree to disagree. You don't move past it. There is no solution. It is like someone is emotionally unavailable. Now, for those of you, some of you may be in a relationship with someone who's married. You may be married and your partner may be cheating, okay? Um, you may be cheating on your partner or both, okay? Because there's, there's a lot of the S elements here. Someone is emotionally unavailable. It could be you or it could be your partner. The reason they're emotionally unavailable, or it could be someone that you like, okay, too, also for those of you who are single and you're not in a, in a committed partnership. Um, if it's somebody in your single that you like, um, this is you not hearing them for them for some time. Ladies, for those of you who have not heard from somebody that you've liked for some time, you're talking weeks, months, years, um, this is where, this is not a happily ever after for you. And this is not the person for you. There's too much negativity around this person for it to work out. Now, this is a general reading. So I want you to remember that. And also, you know, um, you know, this is where I suggest doing a private reading if you, are, you have the situation so I can see. But ultimately, if there's a disconnect, this is the bloody wanker card, okay? The bloody wanker card, also known as the asshole, okay? If there's someone that cut you off, giving you the silent treatment, not call, not return your texts, not return your messages, this person is not interested in the relationship with you. And if they were to call you, it's just a booty call. That's all it's going to be. Uh, for some of you who are in a relationship, this is a disagreement where um, someone is just not open to, to fixing the problem. There may be some problem, but this person is not open to it. They're just like, don't talk to me. I don't want to talk to you kind of thing. Um, a lot of times this is a card about potential, seeing the potential in a relationship, seeing a potential in somebody. A lot of times women see the potential in a drug addict or an alcoholic because they can baby them and kind of fix them up and put them back together and make them into something more. You know, it's sort of like taking them that, that mound of clay and turning it into something great, a beautiful vase, you know. Um, however, this is a negative, this is negativity, this is a person who's not good for you, and therefore, um, accepting that would help you move on from this energy. Um, it doesn't look like you're going to be moving on from it until, I want to say, the end of January, because this is past, present, and future, this is a pattern, this is something that's really, you know, this is like a dark cloud hanging over your head kind of thing. Um, this is really going to be affecting you at the beginning basically through most of the month of January 2016. Um, so the Eight of Swords is the dark cloud hanging over your head. The Eight of Swords is feeling really stuck. Okay, so there's two elements. There's the element of feeling trapped and the element of feeling stuck. Okay, really stuck. Um, the Swan has gotten her or himself into caught in this briar patch and they, and they can't, they don't feel like they can get out. And they need to wait because the bird is coming along and saying, okay, the bird, the little hummingbird, um, is saying, okay, let me get you out. Take, let me, give me two minutes to get you out and I can, you know, unfix this for you. Um, this is calling a friend. This is also talking to a psychic. Um, this is trying to, uh, needing patience and calm to kind of get through things, but also needing to see the world uh, with rose colored glasses again, needing to, to be positive about things. Um, this is a prison of your own making. This is like, this is like, um, you know, you accepting to stay in jail because for whatever reason, you're, you've convinced yourself that that's, that's what you have to do. That's the only way or that, you know, and, and Pisces do this. They don't, well, you don't take the, the pot, the, the, um, the action steps in order to get themselves out of something. They're very self-defeating in this way sometimes. Not always. But a lot of times they can be very self-defeating, where there may be a positive, a, a, a way out, and the Pisces won't take that way out because they're like, they think it's some kind of like punishment, or they wear it as like a 
code of honor that they're they're having to go through this kind of thing. And a lot of times Pisces, oh, they're so fuzzy. <laughs> um, Pisces is the person that likes to, you know, likes it when people feel sorry for them because it will it will. Anytime a Pisces is, I want to say, in some cases, okay, and I'm picking this up, I don't know why, but some, some Pisces and some people try to make their lives worse or seem to be worse than they are in order to elicit an emotional response, in order to elicit the sympathy that they need, in order to gain or garter attention, okay? So the thing about this is that you need to... You know, get out of get out of jail. To me, this is getting out of jail. This is like you know, this is not not a literal jail. Or some some people might be, but um, this is more of like you know, you're in a situation that you need to get out of, and you're for whatever reason you accepted that it's painful. You accepted that it's bad situation. Some of you may have be in love with someone who's not a good person, but you've accepted that maybe that's all that you deserve, or maybe that's all that you can think is, you know, you're going to meet anyway, so it doesn't matter. This is like saying, fuck it, doesn't matter if I'm with somebody good or bad. This is settling for an asshole, okay? You don't want to settle for an asshole. And guys too, if you're in a relationship with another guy, this is the asshole. Um, guys, if you're in a relationship with a female and they're cheating, she's the asshole, okay? Um, you know, so this is, this is deciding to move out of a situation that's negative, uh, into something better. Um, yes, it's going to cause some heartbreak because there's going to be some major upset, uh, that happens in, I want to say the middle to the end of January. To me, this is heartbreak. This came up for Aquarius as well. So to me, they're, they're connected. Um, the two cards here like this are showing up together. So, um, the heartbreak, um, I feel like it's with a relationship that's no longer serving either, you know, one of you or both of you. Um, but it may be pain that's an, almost like something that you need to go through, something that you need to let go of. Um, you know, some of you are very focused on work. Um, cause you do have the eight of pentacles are very focused on finding a job. Okay. Um, the thing is, is that all this negativity from your relationship is blocking you. So it's sort of just like any kind of strides forward in career or any strides forward to make actually more money. It's being blocked by all of this negativity. Um, so we're being blocked by this person that's in your life. Um, Again, the outcome is meeting the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups may be an Aquarius female. It also may be um, someone with a lot of strong water in their chart as well. Uh, Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. This could be a Pisces. You might end up with another Pisces. I feel like this, is, this could be a Pisces-Scorpio combination, Pisces-Taurus, um, Pisces-Aquarius combination um, at the end of January. For whatever reason, this is somebody new uh, coming in. But you have to kind of work on healing and getting over this pain and understanding that this um, emotional response is natural. You know, when you break up with someone, it's natural. You know, you may be getting out of a very long-term partnership or long-term relationship, and it's not going to be easy. And it is probably going to be a little bit messy. But um, I feel like you're going to be moving into a more positive, in a more positive direction should you get out of this relationship if you are in one, okay? Um, I feel very strongly that that's kind of what needs to happen. You need to rest. You know, you need to recover and you need to, um, I want to say, move on. Um, there is also several elements about um, children. So some of you may have children or spending time with children, grandchildren as well. Um, and being very focused on family, coming into a better time, letting go of this relationship, I feel like is going to, it's almost like I really want to do like a whole new spread to see what comes next. But I feel like you're going to have to go through this process. It is going to be a process though. Um, it is not in, you know, getting out of this relationship if you're in one, it's not going to be easy. Um, cause I feel like for some of you, it's a long-term relationship. It's a serious committed, committed, committed partnership. For some of you, it's like being interested in somebody who you shouldn't be interested in, 
or still being in touch or talking to someone who you shouldn't even be talking to because they're not good enough for you um, or they're just not a good person in general, okay? I feel like it's going to fall into one of those two categories. For those of you who are single, um, you know, what I, I feel like it is you being frustrated about finances. Some of you are very young. Some of you are in school. Some of you are trying to figure out what you're doing with your life. But any kind of negativity, any thought process that's not positive for you is going to block your way forward. Um, so put on the rose-colored glasses and see the world as being potential. Um, because it is also not worrying. It's also about opening up your mind and saying, what are my possibilities? What's out there? What can I possibly do? For those of you who have been in kind of a place of hardship, you need to take positive action steps moving to move forward in a, in a direction that, and, and some people don't know what direction to take, which is what kind of holds them up. Um, sometimes it's just networking, net, needing to network more. Sometimes it's needing to revamp your resume. Sometimes it's needing to talk to people and saying, hey, you know what, I'm looking for a job. What do you know? Is there anything that you can find that you see? Let me know um, kind of thing. It's important. These things are practical things that you can do to to move out of a, of a tough situation. Some of you are staying in a situation because of financial reasons. Okay, some of you are sort of like in a partnership that sucks. The partnership sucks really bad. And it, 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 to me, there's no love there anymore. But it's just like, for whatever reason, you want to stay in the house. Or for whatever, whatever reason, you want to keep the car. For whatever reason, you don't want to go through any kind of financial hardship that a divorce or breakup would cause. And you're dependent on the other person or there's some kind of dependency. It's sort of like codependency where it's like you can't get out of the relationship because you may not have a job um, and you want to leave, but you can't. And so or you feel like you can't. Um, so things need to happen quickly. You need to take the job that pays some money and you need to make decisions that are kind of hard decisions to make. Um in order for you to move forward, in order for you to get back on your feet. I don't feel like you are financially going to be in a place of hardship. I just feel like it's the way you're seeing your life. You're seeing your life as sort of like you're in a financial tough spot. Or maybe you're the one who's crying. My, my friend used to say, call it crying poor. Where you're crying poor all the time. But don't do that because that's just going to put that out into the universe and that's what you're going to see mostly. Okay? And don't, and try not to make your situation worse or don't accept like that your situation is worse than actually what it is um, in order to to get the sympathy from others because I feel like what you need to do instead of that is actually just saying you know what some things have not worked out 2015 sucked you know I'd be like 2015 sucked but I'm gonna make some I want to move forward I want to take some positive steps forward and I'm going to um, you know, try to get out of my situation, how, you know, ask for people for help, you know, any advice that you give me on how to do that would be great. Um, you know, being honest, be honest and be like, okay, this is the situation. This is where I'm at. This is what I, this is what I need to, um, survive. Some of you need to be really practical. Some of you need to get really, really practical down to the basics. What is the bottom line? Bottom line, do you need X, Y, Z for you for you to pay your bills? Whatever that bottom line is, you need to stick to it. If you are not sticking to a budget and you're kind of spending willy-nilly here or there, then you really need to kind of look at relook at your budget and see, okay, well, how can I sort of fix things? If there's not enough money to go around, you need to get work on getting a second job, think about starting your own business. And some of you are working like harder but not smarter. So it's like taking another job but for minimum wage. So you need to be smart about your finances. Um, some of you, again, are, you know, make it, are making it seem like you're in a place of hardship, but you're not. So don't put that out there. Again, do not put that out there. Um, be in a place of abundance. Um, don't, you know, don't, you know, again, it's materialism. Some people, it's never enough, no matter how much they have. And really, that's the way it is with parents, and that's the way it is with money. So, you know, parents can, for, you know, when it comes to children, uh, parents always want more for their children. That's the point. That's, that's parents for you. They always want more, okay? It can never be enough because they can never feel like their children are secure enough. They want the most for their children. This may be the way, you know, you may have a Pisces mom or a Pisces dad. 
you know, or a Pisces mom and an Aries dad, or an Aries mom and a Pisces dad, or whatever the situation may be. And, you know, there may be some element where they want more for you, and it may seem like for you, you know, you, you got a job, but it's not paying enough. You know, so it's sort of like you're re-looking at things and going, well, what, what job is going to pay me more? What career where, what, what career can I be in where I, I get paid more money kind of thing? Um, it could also be where your parents are crying poor, but they actually do have money, you know? Um, so either you are crying poor and you actually have money or your people, somebody in your life is doing that. Um, I feel like it's some, someone who's like, it has someone who's contributing to your your household, you know, so if you're a college student, you're watching this, this is like, you know, your parents who are trying to help you out or trying to kind of get you on a career track that's going to help you find a way to pay your bills, find a way to help you survive, um, practical things. Um, for the, for the, some of you, it's like, you know, you may be older and you may, you know, have a, what you might call like a nest egg, you know, um, but you always could have more. There's there's some element of miserliness. Uh, even though the miser card did not come up, I feel like those two cards together, this quest for wealth and this, you know, the page as well, which is like almost like there's a beast inside, okay, of you, okay, uh, for some of you, where that beast is a material beast. It's like the cookie monster beast where it's never enough. Um, the thing is, is money cannot buy, you cannot buy security. Um, there is no security in life. So you need to kind of accept it and say, you know what, I'm abundant with whatever money amount that I have, you know, um, and be grateful for it. And, um, you know, always try to shoot higher as far as career and push more forward. But I feel like in this sense, it's not really about that. I feel like some of you are just like needing to come to a place of Honesty and understanding about where you're at with your finances. Uh, really, okay? Um, be honest with yourself. And be honest with other people, too. Uh, I feel like that's important. So anyways, um, this is a long video, but thank you guys so much for watching, liking, subscribing, Google Plusing my videos. You guys mean a lot to me. And, um, you know, I'm excited for 2016. So... Um, stay tuned for more videos. I will be back in January for more videos in 2016. And, um, you know, again, if you'd like to have a private reading, um, definitely email me, elizabetholson31 at gmail.com. Um, you can check out my website at oracledaphne.com. And I will, you know, see you guys soon. So um, I send you big hugs. Big hugs. Big kisses. All right, talk to you guys soon. Take care.